great choice of music where even the focus on the space looks like it adds to the choreography and to the interpretation of the music. This last tough jump, triple lutz, making it look easy. You always take too soon. This is the high I get. You skate on ice, and I come out and I hear that every day, and that makes me, that makes me high. So, so awesome. when you train, they said you trained harder than ever. What is a typical? Because it looks like you're doing weights. You're not just skating every day. You're doing a lot of strengthening on on different core parts of your body. Yeah. Well, my philosophy going into Vancouver after Torino was just that no one would outwork me, and. You know, it was easy for me actually to get in that mentality because I enjoy working hard and nothing makes me happier than knowing that I've given 150% at the end of the day and like I was willing to sacrifice everything and really that's what it took was to sacrifice everything in my life, every holiday, every birthday, every party, every night out and nothing made me more happy than to be able to do that and, and get home at night and, and all I could think is that I had nothing left. I, I never wanted to get home and feel like I hadn't given everything that I had in my body that day. But how many hours a day did you work out? Usually my schedule was seven hours a day of work. So like eight to 10 in the morning was all my core training and my cardio and my warm up stuff and stretching I would do in the morning. Then 11 to two was on the ice and three to four was on the ice. And then from five until whenever I finished my workout was uh, like weight, some weight training and calisthenics and wow. more core training and stuff. But it's awesome. I mean, it made me so happy. So. Yeah, it wouldn't make me that happy. Um, <laughs> that's a lot of working out. I like to work out, but that's every single day, seven hours a day. Don't you just some days just I just have to. But you're, I mean, I know it was for a goal. But and then I, this is because I don't want to not get to this. How you came up with your short uh, program? The 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 what inspired you? It, tell people what that was. Well, my short program, the music idea came from my choreographer, Lori Nichols. She's awesome, and she, she comes with these great ideas. But sometimes they're a little bit outside of my comfort zone. So she wanted me to skate to Firebird, which is like a very famous Russian classical piece of music. And I just, I had a hard time like relating to it. And she's giving me like some of these like movements that a, that a bird would do and wanting me to have the attitude. And she's like, don't you ever watch birds? Don't you know? And I was like, I don't know. I mean, I was doing like what you were doing before I came on, uh -huh, just a lot uh -huh, of that. And she was right. like, this is not OK. Right, right. Um, so I was <laughs> sitting at home after training, and all of a sudden, like these birds like fluttered onto like a windowsill. And they were like sort of doing like bird-like things. I was like, oh my god, I'm, they're doing my short. The birds they're were doing, doing bird -like I know that move, yeah. yeah. And so I sort of like observed them and was like standing in my kitchen trying to mimic birds and then realized what was Wait, going in what on. Way? And what were you doing, <laughs> like mimicking birds? Like, like kind of, cause no, that's, that's a pigeon. Squawking, that's a pigeon. Yeah, that's a pigeon. Pecking, you, you're pecking. doing that? <laughs> and were you like trying to, you know how they get into their feathers like that? Were you doing that? Well, it's like birds move so suddenly, like yes. when they turn their head, they're just like, Right. Like, <laughs> right. Um, and I was having trouble getting that. And then the way that they like use their. <laughs> yeah. Tony's. <laughs> Tony's scared of birds, so all of this is frightening um, him. Um, he's not okay with this. But you know what's funny is that you had never really watched birds before, and then some, suddenly somebody says something, and then all of a sudden these birds, which probably had been on your window so every, every single day, I but just them. because you were conscious of it you start noticing them i think that's that's so amazing. birds so birds are responsible I owe for it that to you. i um, guess so and
And you're going to be on uh, Dancing with the Stars, is that right? This is true, That's yeah. exciting, right? Are you yeah, excited? Yeah, very excited, yeah. very excited. I'm really goal-oriented, and, you know, the reason I was, I was able to push myself in training was because I always have to accomplish my goal. And if I'm struggling with one jump or something in training, I'll tell myself I have to do it 100 times. And I won't stop until I've done it 100 times. I won't go home until I've done that 100 times. Or like, it, it, wow. it applies to my everyday life. Like, I'm very OCD that way. Like, if I have to wash my car on Tuesday, and my longest break on Tuesday is eight minutes, like, I'm going to figure out how to wash my car in eight minutes. <laughs> and so to not have that structure and not have that mentality in my life anymore would be too difficult. I was ready for my next challenge, right. you know, and Dancing with the Stars is yeah. that challenge. You better look for something after that, because it sounds like you really have to have some kind of goal every single time you do something. <laughs> All right, so uh, I wanted to give you something, because this is uh, so beautiful, you want to take care of it, okay. and I want it to be kept somewhere safe and also prominent, so you can look at it every day and be proud of it. Um, who's bringing it out, Andy? Is it a birdcage? <laughs> If I can just Should I stand uh, up? No, you can you stay right here. It? I want to take the okay. medal. All right. Now. <laughs> it looks good. Okay. Why does it look better on you in a box than it does on me in person? <laughs> You're pulling it off. No, you that's really uh, are. Yeah, it's just a way that I'll wear a gold because I never will any other way. Um, all right, well, listen, we're I so. I have something for you, oh, too. Oh, you have something actually. for me, too? Yeah. What? This is some official U Team USA gear from the Olympics, so you can sport it. You can wow. borrow my gold medal. We can hike look together. That. To lower 24 hours without sleep, but I guess there's some adrenaline attached to winning the Olympic gold medal, and Scott Hamilton and Dick Button are part of the conversation as well. Scott, in your mind, what was decisive last night? I think it came down to the best conditioned athlete, the one who worked the hardest to prepare for this event over the last four years, that rose to the top and gave the performance of his life and, and uh, beat probably the best field of of Olympic men's skaters in history. Dick, in your mind, what made the difference? Uh, well, the extraordinary performance number. Uh, uh, I think it was a sense of the whole, the total package that came out of it. Uh, the fact that there was choreography, that there was interpretation, that there were wonderful spins. Uh, the whole Olympic experience is not just one quadruple jump. And I think that the fact that Evan was able to put together the entire package uh, was what made it. It was a clear picture, and that was, that was spiffy to see. You had to go first by the luck of the draw, and then you had to wait an hour while five other skaters took their shot at it. You knew you had done well, but it must have been nerve-wracking to wait that hour. Yes and no. I think uh, going first was maybe a blessing for me because I was able to just lay it down and not think about anyone else and that always helps me to have that thought process and approach to just mind my own business, do my job, and then let the chips fall the way they will. And so I kind of enjoyed last night being able to throw it down, do my performance, be 100% satisfied on the ice, and then pull up a chair and be a spectator and cheer on that tremendous group of men that, that skated phenomenally well and to be a spectator in that Olympic Games and to, you know, be a part of, of the Olympic experience of many of my friends and colleagues that I've grown up skating with was, you know, pretty cool to be able to do that. Yeah. Scott, you had a point. Was there a conscious strategy of how to garner as many points as possible against the Flashenko? Well, that's always a strategy, and it's not necessarily against a Flashenko or against an XYZ. It's more every competition out, it's about overcoming a personal best and basically surpassing that number and so last night I had a number in my head 159 and I knew the the small places and the steps because the program now it, it's four minutes and 40 seconds starting pose to ending pose you get graded on every single step and each step is also an opportunity to accumulate points and I know in the past where I've maybe lost some points and so I was sure last night that I wasn't going to lose a single step at four minutes and 41 seconds, Tom <laughs> Hammond exclaimed, 
Evan Lysacek with the skate of his life. Yes. Did you feel that way in that instant too? I felt like it was it was a winning performance for me because it was the goal that I set for this Olympic Games was to come in and have that clean performance with no mistakes. Um, I've been looking for that skate all season and to have it here at the Olympics, I can't describe it. It's what every athlete dreams of is to have their best in the pinnacle, pinnacle moment. And, um, you know, that's the achievement that right now I'm, I'm totally overwhelmed with. And I think as this gold medal starts to set in, you know, it'll become more and more real. But right now it was a competition and I did my job and that, that makes me so ecstatic. It goes back to that wonderful thing that the one thing you will remember, and I can tell you this is the actual proof of it, is that that will weigh around your chest for the rest of your life. However, in your mind will be the fact that you skated well. And that will be the thing that is the most satisfying thing. And 50 years from now, you will find that that will be what you remember of this event. It's a lovely, lovely feeling. You know, Dick, we've talked often about the blend of athleticism and artistry, which is figure skating. The proportions may shift from time to time in a given judge's mind. In your mind, and you're a stickler for these things, you have a very strong point of view. In your mind, was this the proper blend of athleticism and artistry? Abs absolutely. It was a marvelously done program in the sense that it had a creative force going behind the choice of the music and the costume and the movements that went with it, and that was the great element of it. It was the totality of this whole thing, and that's what makes it go. You, you cannot have that. Kluzhenko did not have that, and uh, that's ultimately why I think he lost. It was a great skate. It was a skate from start to stop. It was a great skate, and it's figure skating. It's every moment. It's it's showing off, Dick, right? Not only what you can do in the air, not only what you can do spinning, but it's what you can do with those knives strapped to your feet. And Evan showed mastery on every level, and I think that's why he's the Olympic champion, and I think that's why he's a great representative of men's figure skating, because he's got it all. It's not just one thing. He's got everything. It's all you've heard as we wrap this segment up. It's all you've heard for the last 24 hours or whatever it is. Gold medal winner, Olympic <laughs> champion. Are you getting used to it yet, or is it all just a blur at this point? It's a total blur. And I think because I've been in this Olympic bubble, I don't have a real comprehension for the world outside of the media center, the Olympic Village, the arena. And I think once I take a step out of that, I'm going to remember, like, oh, yeah, that is the Olympics. And I think we get wrapped up in feeling like the Olympics is in our, our little city here, but it's around the entire world. And um, I'm such a proud member of Team USA here. And um, we have such a strong team. And so many of my friends in different sports have been really succeeding. So I think that, to me, is what makes the Olympics. And to share this with them and to, to be a small part of this Olympic movement here in Vancouver is what's so special. Scott Hamilton, Dick Button, thank you very much. Evan Lysacek, again, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Yes, master. I'm excited to have a Russian partner, but I'm relieved that you're not holding it against me that I beat your Russian skater. That's okay, you don't fall. What do you do? Ouch. It's true. <laughs> it's true. 2006 U.S. silver medalist, Evan Lysacek. What? My number's up already? Oh, man. I didn't even pick my music. Oh, well. I guess I've got a few ideas I could try. See that? I want to poke it. You want to poke your it? <laughs> well, that is. What about your? Keep so the going. dance partner is she going to go with you? Yes, Anna is my oh, partner. Anna. She's a redheaded rooster. She's great. Yeah. She's awesome. <laughs> she, yeah, she'll be with me at all times. So. Wow, that's yeah. more information than I expected. But I'm very excited yeah. for both of you. I wish you a lot of happiness. I won't even try to correct that phrase. Yeah. <laughs> um. Just hope I don't fall. Will you take care of my kids if I fall? Yes, we're going to split them all between the cast and they're going <laughs> to visit each other every two days. Step, bum, bum, ya, da, 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 ya, da. I love that, like, everything is a different.
pum 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 I have a big butt, though. No, you don't have a big butt. Who told no. you you have a big butt? A lot of people. They haven't seen big butts. Champion Evan Lysacek and his partner, Anna Trebinskaya. It's like very... Mm -hmm. Android. Android-y face. Malfunction. But then system, not function. That's not function. perfect. Not function. Not function. Yeah. Yeah, uh, she's feisty. <laughs> um, she was like, I thought you knew what you were doing. Are you counting in threes or eights? And I was like... So, Evan, I want to talk about this week's dance that we're going to have. I'm not going to talk about it unless you do it in a thick Russian accent. Well, then you won't be able to understand me. But I want it. <laughs> Just give me these simple pleasures. Um, so, this week's dance we have, it's like jive, but in ballroom. So, it's like doing all these that we had, just in the frame. And then, like, going around each other like that. And this is our dance. It's called the quick step. That wasn't very thick, but oh, thank you for up. the informative talk. <laughs> 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 Kitty, I have been watching you. I think inside my head, what can I tell this poor, poor American girl? that is helping, that is making the help, okay? You're real fat. You have to enjoy all this time's journey. And you only have the one chance living the life. And one other thing, very, very important, Kitty. I want you to enjoy the vodka. Cheers to you. What? Shas great, shas great. No, smell good, huh? Oh, duck. <laughs> Hi, I'm here with Chelsea, and we're, we've been training for Dancing with the Stars. We're taking a break, and I just want to ask her a few questions. Chelsea, if you could pick one person in this world that was going to just conquer it, who would it be? Uh, I would say Martin Luther King. Cut, cut. Hey, Ellen. Well, I'm trying for this to catch on, for you to conquer the world, so I've just been trying to drop subtle little hints, not be too obvious about it, but just discreet and classy. Yeah. Hi, I'm with Chelsea, we're at Dancing with the Stars, and I'm just going to ask her a few questions. Chelsea, if you could pick one person to conquer this world, who would it be? Um, I'd probably say uh, George Washington. That's not what we talked about. 